Hello there. Today on Hey Have You Seen That Film, I'm not going to actually give a review. I've, I'm going to make a list. I love lists. And I've seen lots of other people's lists. So I thought today I would share my list. And I'm going to actually share my top five favorite James Bond movies. I've, to be honest, I don't really watch the James Bond movies anymore. I used to be a big fan of them. As I've gotten older, you know, they're still, it's more nostalgia to me that I, I might enjoy one here and there, but to be honest, I don't think he's the best guy. You know, he, he's definitely suave, he's definitely cool, and I like the spy aspect to him, but I mean, he sleeps around with so many women. I wonder, like, I just, I don't know, in my head, I'm just not, it's just not a, an attribute. I admire so much, so I don't really watch them as much as I used to. But that's not to say I still don't get a good kick out of them. And so I thought today I would share my top five favorite James Bond movies. And I'm just gonna do my top five. I don't wanna I don't wanna take the time to go through every single film and be like, okay, which one do I like more than that? So coming in at number five. I would put License to Kill. You know, I think Timothy Dalton's Bonds, they get a lot of respect, but I also think they're very underrated. And I think License to Kill is one of the best Bond movies. I love how, I love the darkness to it. I like that Dalton was very, people say he was, he was before his time. Um, because everyone's so used to the the Roger Moore, and I think Roger Moore was great, and you know, all of his comedy. But Timothy Dalton really brought in this dark bond, and License to Kill, you definitely see it. His whole, okay, well, you know, he gets his License to Kill revoked, but he's still going after the guys, he's still going after Sanchez for taking down Felix Leiter. And it was cool to see Bond just not care. He didn't care that he didn't have the his license. He didn't care that he had been he wasn't a spy anymore. He's like, my have one goal in mind, and that is to take down Sanchez. And I love that about the film. The film it was, and I love the the ending truck chase. And it was it was, it was super cool. So I think License to Kill was one at number five. Number four would be For Your Eyes Only, um, by Roger Moore. I I. Like I said, I like Roger Moore, and I think this was his best Bond film. And some of the other ones, I think he's really good, but I, I sometimes I do think he's there's, he's a little too cheesy sometimes. I think, perfect example, Moonraker. I feel like every other line out of his mouth was a joke, and it was Roger Moore, and it worked for him, but I I thought it was cool. I think that's what I like about Free Eyes Only. It was cool to see Roger Moore bring on the more serious approach to the character, something that he didn't usually do. You know, it would occasionally slip out in his films, but I thought it was cool to see, for the majority of the film, that that's who he was. He was playing this more serious character, and I liked, um, I liked the setting, I liked the story, so I think Free Your Eyes Only, number four. Number three, You Only Live Twice. I, You Only Live Twice was the first, I knew there was, so growing up, we had Dr. No from Russia with Love and Goldfinger on VHS, and we watched those a lot. Uh, but I remember my brother one year for Christmas got You Only Live Twice, and that was the first time that I was kind of like, oh yeah, there are other Bond movies out there. And I, I'd i loved You Only Live Twice. Now I get it, the whole Bond becoming a Japanese man, it, you know, it wasn't very convincing. I could, you're still like, that's Sean Connery. Like, I can tell you that's Sean Connery. But I loved the story. I loved the action in the movie. Uh, you know, Japan and the whole rocket that stills rockets and starting World War III. And you finally get to meet Blofeld, which I think this was hands down the best Blofeld in the entire series. The ones afterwards, I wasn't crazy about. And so I would say that Blofeld in You Only Live Twice was the best one. Number two, The Living Daylights. I think Timothy Dalton, like I said, is 
after Sean Connery, it's Timothy Dalton when it comes to best Bond. I like, it was cool, I think, for to see just Dalton's character and the Bond he was bringing. This was his first one, and so this one he was like, he was just changing the whole game of what had already been going on with James Bond. So, and I... I just I just love Dalton's character. I liked that it was more like he wanted to focus more on the character and who the character was instead of, you know, all the the gadgets and the women and he just brought this more serious side to it that was great. And I have nothing wrong with the one-liners and the funny ones and the funny jokes and all that, but it was I liked what Dalton did with the character and I love um I just love his work as Bond, and I wish he got to do more. And now my all-time favorite James Bond movie is Thunderball. And I know that a lot of people, it's not particularly their favorite. It's not their least favorite, but I know that a lot of people complain about the underwater scenes. But I thought the whole film was, all the underwater scenes, I mean, it was it was beautiful being able to see all this underwater shots. And I... I loved the action. I loved the story. It was the first Bond film that I, I bought, and it's my it's my all time favorite. I've I've watched it a lot. I just love. The story was very simple to follow along. It's we here we have, nuclear bombs are taken, and if you guys don't pay up, we're gonna drop them somewhere. I loved Sean Connery in the film. He's my favorite Bond, and I just thought the film was exciting. For me, it, it kept me interested. I know a lot of people, like I said, complain about the underwater scenes that they drag on, but I didn't feel that. I, I enjoy the underwater scenes. I enjoy everything about this film. I think, you know, years later they remade it, and they brought back Sean Connery in the remake. I didn't think that was such a good idea. But, yeah, Thunderball, number one. Now I know for many of you, you're probably like, what? Because my whole list is probably a controversial list. You know, most lists you see for James Bond have either Goldfinger or Casino Royale at number one. Both are good films. I enjoy both of them a lot. Just not my favorite, you know? And so I'd love to, I love reading other people's lists. I love seeing what other people think. So feel free to share. You can share just your top five. You can share all 24 films if you want to do that, or 26 if we're counting the, the two unofficial ones, but feel free to share and, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I hope you subscribe down below for more, more lists, and if you haven't seen, I have a few film reviews on there, so go ahead and check them out. Thanks, have a great day.